Hello everyone and welcome to another Figma prototyping tutorial. In this video, we're going to take a look at this interactive downloadable file component and I'm going to show you step by step how to achieve this result in Figma. So as you can see, it has a hover state where a button that says download appears and you're then able to click it with some hover and press down interaction of the button. And then when you actually hover outside the component, you get you know, you know, you revert back to the initial state. This is what we are creating today. And as always, if you'd like to download the source file for this component, make sure to check the link in the description that will take you to my store. And right now, let's get started creating this interactive component. I'm going to start with the text tool. So I'm going to press T on my keyboard to type in file name, file name .pdf. And this is going to have font size 12. And this is going to be Avenir Next bold. And then I'm going to duplicate this and create another text object. But this one will say file name or file title, just headline, right? This is going to be 16 in terms of font size. And also it's actually going to be slightly lighter. And I think about demi bold seems about Right, then I'm going to create a frame that will be 30 by 30 pixels. And this frame is going to be called file type icon. I'm going to turn this file type icon frame into a component and then do an option, click and drag to create an instance of this component. So we have a file type icon component and an instance, which means whenever we make a change here, it's going to be reflected in this instance. The next thing we need to do is actually select both of these and press Shift A to create an auto layout. This auto layout is going to be called text. And when we select the auto layout and press enter, we have to specify fill container under horizontal resizing so that it might get changed like this whenever we you know, change the width of the whole component. Then we're going to select the text auto layout as well as the instance of the file type icon component. And again, press Shift A to create another auto layout. And this auto layout is going to be called icon and text. And we're going to make sure that the text auto layout will be also set to fill container. Again, the reason being this, so that this might happen, right? And then we're going to also select this whole thing and add some padding horizontal as well as vertical with some fill and some rounding. We're going to probably change these values because I think this is way too, um, the spacing is way too big, which means that I think we should go for 20 on the spacing, maybe even a bit less like 16. And in terms of the vertical padding, we could go for like 16 as well, maybe decrease this rounding to 14. In terms of the text auto layout spacing, I think we could move this closer together to like zero actually, so that there is no spacing at all. And once we are done with this, meaning setting up all these values and all these spacings, we can create a frame now within which the actual download button is going to be placed. I'm going to use the frame tool again to create a frame. And just to recognize what's going on, we're going to turn this frame to be a red, uh, sorry, a gray color. And we're going to rename this button container, right? Makes sense because it's going to contain a button. Um, then I'm going to press command X, select this auto layout icon and text and paste that within this auto layout. So this happens, but we're going to fix this by setting absolute position over here. So I'm going to, I'm going to press this and then I'm going to center it vertically and align that to the right. Additionally, I'm going to make sure it has the precise same height as the whole object which is 70 pixels and we're gonna under constraints make sure that this is right and this will say top and bottom again the reason why we are doing this is when the component is gonna change height maybe pretty unlikely but let's build this the proper way this button container is gonna react by stretching itself vertically but uh, horizontally in terms of horizontal constraints, it's still going to stay glued to the right side of this whole object. So that's the goal behavior. And um, I'm going to make this a bit transparent. So let me actually turn this to black with 20% opacity. And we're going to also check clip content under frame dialog right here. And now we are actually ready to 
create our button. I'm gonna select the headline, duplicate that over here and type in download. So this is gonna be the basis for our button. That's gonna say download. So we're gonna go for like heavy with some letter spacing and maybe we would like to make this. Yeah, let's, let's keep it at 16 actually. And um, just to make sure that the whole button fits in this area and it doesn't look weird at the same time, it's gonna extend this whole component and type in some additional words, um, additional name, right? So just to make this a little bit longer, to make, make use of this space more uh, to a to a bigger bigger extent. This download text, we're gonna select that and press Shift A, which is gonna create an auto layout again. Then we're gonna add some horizontal spacing. We're gonna add some fill. This is probably gonna be uh, for now at least uh, black with rounding, and the text is gonna be actually white. So like this. Maybe add some more spacing. We're gonna call this button. I'm gonna also create an icon for this button, which means I'm gonna use the pen tool and just do a little simple arrow like this and then use the pen tool again to create something like this. And maybe we wanna go for a little box right under the arrow like this, because usually that's kind of what you see with these download icons. You have some kind of a line at the bottom or something like a box right here. Uh, we'll probably have to make this a bit smaller. Let's take a look at how this works within the button. Actually, I think this is pretty good, right? What do you think? I think we can make this work. Uh, maybe make this arrow shorter, I don't know. Yeah, well, anyway, good enough, I think, right? Uh, we're gonna also make sure the alignment of this auto layout is center, vertically speaking, because um, this looks uneven, so we're gonna just make sure this is centered. Maybe we're gonna reduce the stroke width to two and maybe with selecting this box right here, we can make it a bit more compact. Yeah, yeah, I think this works. And we're gonna now turn this to a component, use an instance, and finally, we're gonna paste the instance into this button container frame right here. What we need to do is actually make sure this is constrained to the right, horizontally and vertically to the center. So we get the behavior we like, which is approximately this. So we can see that even though this button container is stretching in height, it's gonna, the button is gonna stay in the center and we might have to make this container about 220 pixels and maybe move this button a bit further. The basic structure is just about finished. Uh, we, we'll just have to specify some interactions, but let's, um, let's, let's pause for a moment and think about some visual improvements. When this button appears, I think it would look nice to have a wide gradient, uh, which means we're gonna go for linear over here. And this gradient is gonna go for from completely white to transparent white, which means it's gonna be, everything that's gonna be beneath this frame is gonna be gradually hidden behind a, a gradient like this. To better visualize this change, we might turn this whole component to some color like gray, let's say, and now we can see what's what's uh, what's going on with the, with the container background. So we can stretch it out even more, I think, and then just make sure this change is gradual where right when the button starts, you're gonna get this completely white color. So I think this is kind of the look we wanna go for. You can see how elegantly is the text being hidden behind the frame. It's not sudden, it's, it's gradual, and it's, I think it, it looks good like this, right? So um, you can see that the functionality is still the same. We get this fade in, basically any width of this component. Right now we could, do the icon. So why don't we prepare an icon for the file type? I'm gonna use a rectangle tool and start drawing within this component. You can see that it's being updated right here. We're gonna go for a stroke. Stroke is gonna be two pixels, I think. Gonna be centered, centered against the path. Gonna be about this big, so we get some even spacing around the rectangle. And we're gonna create some vertices right here with equal distance from the corner, which in this case is now four. 
So let's do like six and here the same thing. So that's one, that's three and that's six. We can select this vertex and then press delete. Select these again and press command J to join these. You can start, kind of start seeing the file shape coming together. Then we're gonna use the pen tool again and do this. Two pixels black, right? And I think we could adjust the sizes. So this can be, I think even eight, which means we'll have to move these two pixels. By the way, to access these dots, I'm pressing enter. So when you press enter on a shape like this, you can click and drag these vertices. And I think we could even decrease the height of this, like this, select this corner right here and do some rounding and here as well and make this appear a bit softer okay so four that's a bit too much with these that's gonna be two and we're gonna use the text tool to write down pdf we're gonna use auto layout shift a add a red fill and as you can see the text needs to be significantly smaller so like six paddings also like three pixels maybe and we have a PDF icon. Now let's just do a few adjustments. So I think the color is too strong. I think we could go for like something more subtle. So let's go for, let's use the HSL slider. We're gonna reduce the saturation and the lightness. Yeah, I think this works. And then we're gonna change this black to white, reduce the spacing between letters and also sample the color of this red for the file icon and then again make it a bit darker like this right so this is the pdf the file type icon i think we could group all of these and center them maybe move them a little bit like this and then maybe remove the background so that it's transparent yep i think this looks good and maybe even reduce the opacity of these because that's way too strong this change the corner back actually yeah so i think that's a solid icon i think we can work with this which means that i'm gonna turn this into a component as well and this is gonna be called downloadable file and i'm gonna create another variant and this variant is gonna be called hover with this one being default right and we're gonna also go to properties over here and rename this property to state with this state with the default state this button container is not gonna be visible which means we're gonna set the opacity to zero like this right so this is what we have by default and this is what we have when you hover over this element then i'm gonna select both of these and under fill i'm gonna turn this to white now under button I think we could go for like a dark blue button actually. This color, something like this, add a variant and then add another one. And again, this property when I'm selecting the whole component is gonna be called state again. We're gonna have default, we're gonna have hover and we're gonna have pressed. And we're gonna define the interaction now. So which means going to prototype, connecting the first state to the second one and say while hovering, change to state hover. This is gonna be instant. And with the second one, I'm gonna say while pressing, change to state press, right? And we need to change the colors now, which means when hovering, I think this could be a bit lighter, the color, a bit less saturation. And when being pressed, this, this could be, again, darker and yeah just darker so we have a button with all three states and the text could also be turned into the same blue color i'm gonna sample it from here maybe this one's gonna be a bit darker like this yeah let's let's use the darker one for both of these and the file name.pdf that's gonna be actually 40 45 percent opacity so the reason why i chose this approach is again when you for example want to change the icon you can easily create another variant or just you can change the text right here. For example, if this is gonna be a PSD document, you can easily change it here and it's gonna update everywhere, uh, but we're gonna keep, keep that at PDF for now. But uh, anyway, any change you do is very, very simple, including updating the button component. You can see the change is being reflected. So this is kind of why when building interactive components, why I'm using uh, the component based approach as much as possible. Now let's actually test our final product, our interactive component on a frame. So I'm going to use the frame tool, create a frame that's 1000. 
by 600. Probably make this a bit darker, like some gray. And then I'm gonna go to assets and search for a downloadable file and place it right here. And also, I think I'm gonna do more of these. So let's, let's do like three, make sure they have even spacing, group them at the center. And now let's rename this test frame and launch the prototype. So this is the preview of our result and it's not working. And the reason is we have forgotten about one very important thing and that's hover state, hover interaction with this component, which means I'm gonna connect it right here and then do while hovering, change to state hover. And let's try that again, reset the prototype and it works perfectly now. So when we hover over this element, you can see the download button appears. And additionally, the download button has a hover state on its own. So when I hover over the button, it gets lighter. And then when I press it down, it gets darker again. And then when I release, it reverts back to the hover state. And you can do the same here and here and basically everywhere where this button, where this component is located. You can also change the size of these. So let's just do this. We might have to change the spacing, but kind of when we change the dimensions, this is what's gonna happen, right? So it's responding to size changes as well. So it's basically responsive. Um, I'm gonna revert these changes. So yeah, this is how you create an interactive downloadable file component that you can use on your Figma prototypes. If you'd like to download the source file for this, make sure to check the link in the description that will take you to my store. And thanks for watching. Thank you for watching all the way to the very end. Leave a like if you learned something new and I will see you in the next one.